Brian Koberger's new courthouse hasn't changed the fact that you, our viewers, have strong opinions. A new courthouse may mean a lot of things, but it doesn't mean you guys have anything less to say. I'm Lainey Law. And I'm attorney Andrew Myers. And today we're going to be looking through some of the comments you guys have had to say about the whole, all the changes that's been happening with the Coburger case. We have a lot of new updates that have been going on and that does not change the fact that you guys have a lot of things to say, a lot of questions, a lot of complaints. So we are going to be looking at some comments on our previous video today. For our first comment, we have AZZZ. Uh, Anne has requested specific discovery, full cast data, missing video of a car, at crucial times, locations, etc. And the feds have it, but aren't going to turn it over. Nothing new in discovery. Otherwise, wouldn't the prosecution know? They are just bogging Anne down with the 398 gigabytes. Uh, that doesn't contain what she wants. So... Why, uh, so why may BT bow out? Uh, it's not like the day Bell Vallow case where the feds worked with the state. The feds have an agenda here and BT doesn't know, understand how to play their game. Maybe Nye and Beatty do. So that has a lot going on in that comment right there. I will let you start off if you have anything to say about this, Andrew. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I have a hard time believing that um, the federal government and the local government of Moscow don't work together. I mean, different branches of government have been known to not talk to each other. But our commenter made a good point about the fact that they did work together in the uh, Vallo and Daybill cases. So mm -hmm. I think that as sad as it is, um, William Thompson is not as sharp as he was as a younger attorney and he's stepped on his own feet a couple of times notably uh with the survey questions you know initially he you know was all up in arms about the fact that uh ann taylor's surveyor was calling all the people in laid off county and allegedly tainting the jury pool but then in the hearing that was streamed on the world wide web no less he starts reading out the questions then when it came to the change of venue issue, he really kind of backed away. He didn't make he, Yeah, sure. He made an argument against it, but it wasn't really a full-fledged argument. So I, again, think that the Ladaw County Prosecutor's Office is going to play a more reduced role and that the Attorney General of Idaho will play a larger role. And if the FBI and the uh, Attorney General of Idaho don't work together, this case could be in serious trouble, serious mm -hmm. trouble. I mean, we saw what happened in the Alec Baldwin trial when the uh, prosecution was withholding evidence and the case got uh, dismissed right in the middle of the trial. So that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, bogging and down with the around 400 gigabytes, um, that is something that kind of rubs me weird too because when, i don't know when you think of having that much data you would expect it to be categorized and organized and if it's being used as evidence wouldn't it have to be like specified as to what like each thing is so it is kind of weird to me that they would give so much unorganized information theoretically it um but is that normal do you think, Andrew? No, it's not. This goes back to when we were commenting about the 51 terabytes. Remember the 51 terabytes mm. way back a year ago, I think, we were talking about the 51 terabytes, and that whole thing kind of disappeared. We never heard about it again. Did they throw it in the trash? Did they go through it and categorize it? Did they, you know, whatever happened to that? So yeah, it's the same issue all over again. I mean, it would seem to me that if the defense has enough money to hire five experts on the change of venue issue, wouldn't they have enough money to pay a skyscraper full of paralegals to go through the 51 terabytes and now the 398 gigabytes? I mean, mm -hmm. we're not getting the full story here. We're not getting the full picture mm -hmm. here from either yeah. side. Yeah, because I guess like my thought is is like if the if it's something that the prosecution is handing over, then wouldn't have the prosecution already gone over it and have it organized in the first place is weird to me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I'm right in the middle of discovery in a case that I'm dealing with right now, 
that involves some expert testimony and involves a little bit of science. But yeah, I was going through some discover the other day, and it's categorized. It's 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 tagged. You know, in the old days, we actually put sticky tabs. You know, so you'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, with those cute little um, numbered tabs you can get. But now it's all done electronically. But it's it's easy. It's mm-hmm. easy. Um, and yeah, it should be categorized. So you know, the the whatever happened to the fifty one terabytes and now the three hundred ninety eight gigabytes? You know. What is that all about? And why isn't why aren't the two sides telling us what's going on with those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fact that the prosecution didn't already have it organized and that if they did have it organized, they wouldn't have given it away organized is kind of weird to me. Um, now from AJ Hartung. Come on, Come on Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> you and I both know this was a long overdue warning to the Honorable Ann Taylor, who has been playing theatric game and not stating opposing opinions and even after this warning continued to push her luck which hardly made the decisive judge her friend pure stupidity on in her part but then she has not shown the ability to be respectful only self-assured so you ever notice when people people want to just push their thoughts down your throat they say come on laney you and i <laughs> both know no i know no such thing i no don't don't push those thoughts on to me and, mm-hmm. you know i don't think there's been a long overdue warning to anyone ann taylor got her way she got to change the venue and a lot of people are saying you know she might be sorry in the long run because this judge doesn't seem to be a happy camper that he has the case he seems to want to be fairly strict although he bent over her way in terms of delaying the trial a couple of months in moscow the trial was going to go forward on june 2nd and now the new judge has pushed it back to August. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know no such thing that she's pushing her luck or pure, being purely stupid. No, I know I know no such thing. I think she's being uh, pretty smart. And she's, mm-hmm. you know, she's doing her job of zealously representing the client to whom she was assigned. So, no, I know no such thing. Sorry. And I- yeah, and I obviously am not a legal professional myself. Andrew is our legal professional here, but I don't know. Uh, the, I haven't been in a million and one courtrooms like he has, but I feel like nothing she's done has been really inappropriate. And I feel like the judge being accommodating to pushing the date back a little bit uh, would reflect that. I feel like if she was pushing the boundaries, then the judge would not have had that leniency in that regard. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. I don't. I. 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 No, I don't know. No, any such thing. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Munster. Uh, my two cents in all this. I like Judge Hippler, and he tells it like it is. The truth hurts, though. Ouch. Also, I like his sense of humor as well. He's the kind of person who can insult the daylights out of someone and leave them thinking, "Is this supposed to be a joke?" Major drug bust in Idaho hit the airwaves at 4 a.m. I was up, and my laptop pinged me. Interesting to say the least. So it's a, a loaded comment, but uh I do think that Judge Hippler, you know, we haven't seen that much of it, but he does seem a little bit more personable, which I think is why a lot of our comments were saying things like they see they liked him. Elizabeth Munster has been with us since the start. When we mm-hmm. first started covering the Koberger case, I remember seeing that name, Elizabeth Munster. So she's been with us a long time. I guess I think she's right. Um, I didn't really sense that much of a sense of humor. I sensed that he was giving him a little bit of a dig without, you know, being really mean about it. You know, he said, if we have to, we stay up nights and we work weekends. That was his way of saying no more of the BS and delay. Let's, let's get going. So he, he did have a nice way of saying that, but that was his message. So, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, for the most part, I agree with you, Elizabeth Munster. All right, perfect. Next one, raindrops follow, following. Great video, Andrew slash Amy, you pointed out and explained so many good factors. Thank you. Any thoughts on the judge's body language? <laughs> I, I think Andrew's got some feeling towards the body language uh, 
detection, but I was captivated by the entire time because it felt like it was speaking volumes. It seems that he had a defensive posture by having his arms crossed, maybe not feeling comfortable. I believe he demonstrated by sharing the statement that he made. Uh, was he soothing himself? Why would he show that he had a need to protect and guard himself? How much of a man can he be if he is handling a death penalty case while demonstrating all these defensive body and weird motions? Best. I think the way you sit in a chair has more to do with the height of the chair. I actually talked to a, a chiropractor one time who, who was a specialist in, you know, where your body should be, that the camera should be right at the eye level. And if you're on a computer all day, the computer should be in front of it. So I think a lot of body mechanics have more to do with, you know, if you're sitting in a comfortable chair, the elevation of the chair, you know, and how high and how low people are, you know, the judges up high and the people are down low, so you've got to lean over a little to see them. And so I've I've never really bought the, you know, reading so much. Remember we had uh, Elizabeth, I can't remember her last name, the body language expert on some time ago, remember that? Mm -hmm. And the body language person was making a big deal out of the fact that Ann Taylor and Brian Koberger were sitting further apart, and so that meant that they were having a rift and then a lot of our commenters said, uh, you know what? The sheriff's deputies are big guys, and they bring him in in chains, and they sit over there. So I you know, thank you, Raindrops, for being a regular viewer and commenter. But no, I don't. I just I don't buy that. Yeah, and I think that's uh, an interesting case to make. And with the body language, too, I will say um, this is probably a corner of the internet that you're uh, thankfully far removed from. But there is like so much like body analysis, TikTok, body body analysis channels, and stuff like that. And um, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, if someone's feeling, you know, when <laughs> I'm assuming it's his own court you know he's used to the court so wouldn't feel defensive in that case but it's an uncomfortable situation we're on camera people also i feel like we're normally not as aware of what our bodies are doing if you find any day-to-day -day person so you know um i agree with andrew in the sense that your your body could be doing all types of things for whatever types of reasons um there's we as humans we have some natural body language indicators but uh you know, I used to be in the media, as you know, and we had all kinds of consultants, all kinds of consultants. And they would tell us to, like, stand to the side and then face the camera like this or stand tall and look down. And then the next one would say, you know, put the camera up above. And we had so many consultants. Now, I'm not saying the judge has any consultants, but there are a lot of things that go into posture and no, I don't buy it. I'm sorry. I just don't. You That's know, a good way to, was... yeah, because, um, Go ahead. well, I was going to say that people that look more natural, like you said, you had all the consultants and stuff like that. Um, it's different when you're also like trained to think about that differently. And I think that's a good point where, um, just because someone is sitting a certain way or has a certain posture, um, they could be an actor basically. Yeah. So, you know, it just, uh... Yeah, I could tell you stories about camera positioning and lighting and, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. And so I don't know. I think he just, you know, was trying to be comfortable sitting there with his arms. I mean, you know, what about me? I squirm. I always have. So one minute I might be sitting there with my arms crossed. The next minute I might have him on the chair. So does that mean that I've that I, you know. No. I can I can vouch that Andrew changes his position while sitting in the office at least like four times. I swear, I, that's the way I am. I can't I can't sit still. I mean, that's the body language ADHD indicator for you. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <Yeah. laughs> oh, so AJ, uh, heart. Uh, let me wait. That's not okay. Oh, I have two comments from AJ. Okay, thank you, AJ. Loyal, dedicated. Um. Yeah, it's, it is strange how language and demeanor can be viewed so differently. I found this judge an absolute breath of fresh air, and I'm surprised that you know who on certain aspects are rather cryptic and do not appreciate his use of cynicism with its underlying human. Any old way, personally, I'm greatly enjoying his uh, no-nonsense uh, pragmatism. Uh, 
it is so welcoming after the dittering and loose control. So this is kind of like the opposite comment. And I think this is uh, going to be like the heart of what this video is, is that some people, you know, really like this judge. And some people like we just saw um, think that, you know, he's closed off. So this is so we have some comments being like, oh, he's funny. Oh, he's personable. And then we have all oh, like he's standoffish. So a lot of different interpretations about this judge. And remember, we've only had one hearing with him. We've only mm -hmm. had that one hearing, and the issues were kind of a wide open kind of a thing. When are we having the trial? How is discovery? You know, he may well be very, you know, I've been before a lot of judges, and if you're just having a wide open hearing, they might be one way. If you're going in on a motion to dismiss, their demeanor might be very different. But yeah, he was very different than the, the previous judge, Judge John Judge just seemed to sit there with a Cheshire grin look on his face most of the time. Whereas Judge Hippler down in Boise does seem to have a much more serious demeanor and approach and his language is more pointed. So to that extent, I do agree 100%. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the... Uh... I don't know, just the, all the different aspects of the body language. And something that I just thought, too, is that, like, you're right, that we've only had the one hearing. At the end of the day, this is almost like uh, his first interview. It's just like, give it a couple months, 50 million hearings down, 50 arguments down, and he's going to be, uh, be may potentially be as beaten down and distressed it's as almost, Judge Judge. It's almost like a first date. They go out <laughs> on a first date, and both parties... Generally, most of the time, put on their their best clothes and they put their best foot forward and they're on their best behavior. And the second time they let down their guard a little bit more, the third time they might be more personable. Then if you have a long term relationship, you, then you find out their real personality. So that's the analysis. I uh, excuse me. That's the analog that I draw. And it's like, you know, we've only had our first hearing with the guy. so. We don't know. And I, again, it's the same with the body language thing. You know, you really shouldn't judge somebody too much on that first impression, although it's true. First impressions are important, right? Mm -hmm. It reminds me, this is uh, maybe not going to reflect the nicest on me, but I have a class that Andrew is probably tired of hearing about because I have it right before I come in for recording where every single class we have to do a presentation, a group presentation, and the groups are constantly changing. Um, so at the beginning of the semester, really put my heart and soul into that. I try to be a coordinator. I try to figure out what's going on in the presentation. I try to put together the presentation. Um, this last Friday that we had, I walked up, we were doing it. I'm like, all right, who's going to present this? And nobody was saying anything. And then I asked someone, can you please present this after we just worked through everything? And so I asked someone who didn't contribute that much to the document to say something. And then, so now here I am like seven presentations deep. Nobody was saying anything. And I stand up, I'm like, I guess I'm going to present this since nobody on my team is volunteering. It's like the, our, the first presentation versus the last presentation, the first court case versus a million court cases in when you're like losing your patience. There's so many things that have happened. And obviously this he's just starting on a new case. It's maybe coming off more personable. We don't know what this is going to be like a few months in when it's beaten down and frustrated and also getting a million emails to his personal email complaining about the case <laughs> similarly to Andrew yeah. <laughs> Andrew had the, you handle all the he handles the pressure very well I will say Andrew gets uh, a lot of emails and navigates it all very well and well again you have to you have you have to remember I used to be in the media and you got all kinds of calls you'd, you'd pull up to a red light with the logo of the uh, station on the side of the vehicle and people would roll down. They would, you people suck. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's no pressure like trying a case. And when you're trying a case, it's just, you know, especially when I first got out of law school and they, they threw me into a products liability case, which was way above my pay grade. And I, I couldn't sleep for a couple of nights before. <laughs> I would literally pace back and forth in my bedroom reciting my opening argument. So, I mean... You know, the people in the comment section can't throw anything at me that I, you know, <laughs> I, I, seriously. 
So yeah. we will have. Now that to wasn't a challenge. <laughs> That's the way it is. Way we'll, it have, is. we'll have to see if Judge Hippler is as resilient as you are. <laughs> if you I'm, can sure. I'm sure as a judge who's tried a lot of cases, he's heard it all. Don't you remember that uh, case earlier in the year? I don't remember the guy's name, but uh, there was a judge up on the bench. And the guy lunged up over the bench and started wailing on her. Remember that? Yeah. So every, oh my god. Every judge in the country has to be thinking of that. There was a. There have been two judges this year that have been shot. Mm -hmm. and it's, so every judge in the. It's horrible. Every judge in the country has got to be thinking about that stuff. Yeah, uh, and what? I have. Uh, I know. I know a judge, and uh, their family court. So they. It's you know interesting to talk about them on a personal level because it's just like they've seen it all it's just like oh he's fighting because of this they're stalking they're doing this so you're that is a good point where as a judge you know you have the horrors of life beaten into you to a degree especially in a situation like this so moving forward dr karen's world thank you for being a public subscriber hey i almost always agree with you all but I have a different opinion from you about the judge saying he's not happy to be there. I think he was acknowledging what a normal and sad case that is. This isn't how it got him to him. Uh, as the plaintiff in a case that recently went to trial, I appreciate when the judge humanized the situation like that. A major holiday happened in the middle of my trial. The judge acknowledged both participants and us and the jury's discomfort, annoyance at working around the holiday, including the judge's feelings. I felt like it relaxed the courtroom. And I think that's a good perspective uh Dr. yeah i Karen. saw i saw this comment and i i think i responded to dr karen that, you respond to every single comment andrew when i pull these comments i'm like well, how am i gonna thing. do this <laughs> they already know what he thinks <laughs> it's a new thing i get up really early in the morning early 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 so i i it gives me something to do so, um <laughs> i think i told dr karen that maybe she's right and that that's a perspective i hadn't thought of um mm -hmm. i thought I was a little bit put off by the thing that, you know, he was saying, look, I'm not happy. I wish I wasn't here. This is like, but, you know, maybe she's right. She could be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different perspective. Yeah, and I def I, I agree. And I, I I didn't see that perspective, but I think, you know, it is a good perspective. And that's part of why I wanted to include it. And a part of me wants to, like, start commenting on the things. Being like, hey, just so you know, you're coming in our episode. Um, because I thought this was... Uh, really nice and I appreciate the feedback that you guys give us um, well the other thing is is that um, some of the family members uh, actually go to all of these hearings and so he may have been speaking to them that I'm sorry about the circumstances you know when you see somebody at a funeral or something like that you say hey I'm glad to see you I'm sorry about the circumstances so it might have mm -hmm. been along those lines yeah it's just like obviously a lot of horrible things had to happen to get to this uh, point but um you said it perfectly. And I, you know, I think uh, Dr. Karen's world is like how she says uh, the case that she was in, um, that the judge talking about it and kind of making it, humanizing it uh, is refreshing. And I think that's why a lot of people in our comments were pretty pleased with the new judge because um, it was a little right. bit more personable in that sense. Um all right, now for our last comment, Donna Lembo. Excellent follow-up video. The amount of discovery that AT was given is enormous. Most likely months worth of video and reading. Our interns allowed to assist with reviewing this information, which we kind of covered a little bit earlier, or only professionals hired by the defense. Is Brian K. allowed to view the discovery? Just wondering, he has a degree in criminal justice. Yes, absolutely. It's his case. Mm -hmm. It's his case. He has an absolute right to to see everything and to respond to it and say, hey, this raises another question, now ask for this, which is why I think we've had so many rounds of discovery. And the other part of this, um, interns and paralegals, and yeah, of course, I mean, one attorney can't handle everything. And so we work with um, paralegals, interns, other attorneys, um, and when you, I think in responding to this one, I said that when you get a new paralegal or intern, you sit down and you have a very long conversation about confidentiality. And you've got to get a feeling from the new employee or intern or even a part-time paralegal. You know, do you understand the seriousness of all of this and that it's all confidential? And then.
you've gone over it after you've talked about everything, then only at that time you present them with a confidentiality agreement and a non-disclosure agreement and have them read it. If you have any questions, you understand it. So, but yeah, absolutely. That's why I've been saying all along with the 51 terabytes that seem to have disappeared. Um, yeah, why didn't they get a skyscraper full of paralegals or mm -hmm. AI or something to go through it all? Yeah, because one person could never go through that ever in your entire lifetime, ever. Yeah, I definitely agree with that where it takes a team, and especially because, you know, I don't know how much you've seen it change over your career, Andrew, but we live in, in such an age with like technology where now it's uh, like it's so easy to be inundated with all these facts before it's just like the before I feel like it's, you know, photos what you can record on paper. Uh, film wasn't as prevalent, but now with like data information and stuff, you might have like a five hour video that you need to go through and analyze and stuff like that. And even but the, the paralegals and interns barely have time for like the stuff like that because there's so much things to kind of rifle through and so many differentiating factors. And, you know, for it, it, it there's a reason that they have the help in the first place i think is a good point to make um and i guess it's interesting too because i never really like you said it's his brian's case he has the right to look through everything um i i keep bringing back sarah Boone. <laughs> it's just like she had all this access to everything against her and she still <laughs> decided that it would be a good idea to speak for herself i think her case is the extreme of trying to, I think she's been trying to micromanage all of her lawyers that she went mm -hmm. through eight of them before she got the current one. I think, I think that's a bad example of how, yes, the client should be very involved in their case. I mean, she seems to have, you know, scared off eight attorneys, but the normal average client, I think, understands that they have an absolute right to everything about the case. But the reason they want a lawyer is to get experience and to get advice and to take the advice. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, they have an absolute right to see everything. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, what you, you just made a beautiful point right there, which is that you are the legal professional. You have all the experience in it. Um, and if for anybody watching this, you know, obviously there's some outliers or it might not be the case but generally i think there's a reason why people get paid to do stuff so rely on someone who has a lot more experience than you to do something uh because there's a reason andrew read all went to all the school that he did and dealt with all the stuff and i can't even imagine going doing the bar exam and all that crazy stuff but well thank you but like look at ann taylor i mean she went through a lot she's been practicing law for a long time she has not only education the experience and the knowledge and the fact that she's been through so many cases. So, you know, um, I think that Sarah Boone would have been in better shape if she had um, not walked out of some of the hearing. One, one of the attorneys, I watched one of the hearings where her attorney had filed a motion to withdraw and the judge was like, she really needs an attorney. And the attorney was like, yeah, she walked out on a hearing. She, I mean, she walked out on a conference that we were having. I was in the middle of talking to her about her case, and she got up and walked out. I mean, that's a bad lawyer-client relationship, and I don't think it was the lawyer's fault. I forget the attorney's name, but she seemed pretty bright. She seemed to know what she was doing. She seemed pretty experienced, and I think Sarah would have done well to listen to her. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there seems to be a reoccurring pattern when you're about nine ten fifteen twenty attorneys deep. i mean obviously she's not 20 attorneys deep but if you gotta change your attorney more than three times it's like uh when you have a lot of bad relationships in a row and you start to wonder maybe the problem is me maybe she should start wondering that <laughs> maybe I she had, has i had a client call me this week that had been through four attorneys before me and i just kind of <laughs> no, not that not that there are times when maybe another attorney was too busy maybe the, the other attorney didn't have the experience with that type of a case maybe the attorney had a personal problem at that time i don't know but somebody called me and they had four attorneys before me and the more they talked the more i could realize so I, <laughs> I politely as seriously as politely as i could i said you know i don't i don't know what i can do that these other four people didn't and I think that was what 
attorney number eight for Sarah Boone was saying was that, you know, look, this is you can't just walk out of a, a, a conference with your attorney. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I think we've digressed. I don't know. Hey. <laughs> go always go down the Sarah Boone train. No, I mean, I want to say just thank you so much for everybody who's, you know, li likes our videos, comments our videos, watches our videos. Obviously, we wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for you guys. So we appreciate uh, everybody's interest. Andrew, do you have any final thoughts? I guess that's about it. I mean, the Koberger case, I think, is going to see a big sea change. There are people on one side that say, well, I know. I just know he didn't do it. I, I Everything I've seen, everything, and I know we haven't seen everything, but everything I've seen tells me he didn't do it. And then there's people on the other side that say, well, I have all of this experience. And because I have all of this experience, because I'm former law enforcement, I can tell you he did it. So I think I think there are people on their know-it-alls on both sides. And I think that, you know, where there have been all these rounds of discovery and maybe we should do an episode looking at what we do know and what we don't know and what we do know would fit in a thimble and what we don't know would come over Niagara Falls. And so we all need to keep an open mind in the Brian Koberger case because we don't know. Yeah, and a lot of people want to say, oh, he's guilty, oh, he's innocent, and a lot of people will leave angry comments, like I've mentioned this before, and our mm -hmm. videos will have people commenting, ah, you uh, are pro-Brian Brian Koberger, da, 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 da. in the same video, there'll be comments being like, oh, you guys are just judgmental and hate him, and we're not saying one way or the other, because there's no way to know one way or another, the trial hasn't happened, we don't even have any of the evidence, there's nothing to know, um, we're just all you know, spectating this and offering our feedback. And Andrew is a legal professional and me as your average jury member. Uh, so we try our best to just present the things as how they are. And, you know, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> and don't try and tell me, Andrew, we both know. Come, come on, on, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me how you think. But don't <laughs> tell me I think the same way because I probably don't. I might. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes we get along, sometimes we have the same thoughts, sometimes we don't. I try to put all the feedback, you know, I try to get a fair sample size of our comments. So we appreciate all everybody who leaves positive comments that are encouraging to us. And, you know, generally, you guys are very respectful, and we appreciate that. And even when you guys disagree with us, you tend to say it in a respectful way. But I think with that, let's head to the grocery store. Thank you. Whether you are in the grocery store, the gas station, or anywhere else, please remember to be kind to people. You don't know what they're going through. And the same goes for our comments section. We want you to comment, but be nice, be kind, be positive if you can. And thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a good one.